So this was a rather hectic week in the real world because I was gym sealing, so I apologize for that if I miss a few things here and there, but a lot did however happen this week in the home arcade space. So let's go ahead and get right into it with the first Arcade 1-Up headline in a few weeks. Well, guess what everybody, looks like Arcade 1-Up's putting the same thing out again. Unfortunately, this has actually been rumored to be happening for a while now, but it's still lazy. Arcade 1-Up's Golden Tee 3D is coming to the deluxe form factor as leaked on Wayfair for an insanely priced $670 US. Now, please remember, Wayfair pricing is not the actual price across the board, so odds are this will probably be about $600 like other deluxe machines. Of course, this cabinet has been widely criticized as the game list has no changes, there's no changes to the art, not even a, even a Golden Tee game that isn't 3D, and the screen size dropped to 17 inches. While the XL version is still available through a number of retailers, you do have to go through the trouble to get a better screen. But really though, it seems to me like Arcade 1UP is just kicking the can down the road as they really have no plan for their future. So on to some more positive news now. Alan1, the arcade game developer who also released Avian Knights on consoles, is currently partnered with Atari, as we discussed last week, and while this is just a prototype from this partnership, it's still really impressive to see. There are set to be two versions of the Asteroids Recharged Cabinet, a three-player version with a 52-inch screen, apparently, and a two-player version with a 32-inch screen, and both will include a knocker underneath the control panel, JBL sound systems, lots and lots of lights, and while these prototypes did show off a coined operation, I suspect these will be modifiable to use a card reader, as the majority of arcades at this point really don't do coin-op anymore, as well, it's cheaper to maintain a card reader than these coin-op systems. Of course, reports from some channels claim that Asteroids Recharged for arcades will be available in quarter three of this year, but that remains to be seen. For now, however, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And now, we have a new Marvel game in the works from Skydance New Media, known as Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. It's the first Black Panther game to my knowledge, period, and the first Captain America game since Captain America Super Soldier in 2011. This game was previewed with a story demo that didn't show any gameplay at all, unfortunately, but they did, however, show off an Unreal Engine 5 tech demo with a single setting, but that's hardly a big deal. Like, we don't really know if this is going to be another Crystal Dynamics Avengers or not, and considering that this is largely being handled by a company with nothing to their name, only being founded in 2021, I'm going to remain skeptical about this product until we see real gameplay. Marvel 1943 was also revealed to be launching in 2025, so hopefully we hear more about this game before then, probably sometime around Summer Game Fest, I suspect. Alright, so Dragon Ball Sparking Zero also released a Power vs. Speed trailer this last week that revealed 11 new characters from Nappa of the Vegeta arc, Master Roshi, and Jason Birder from the Frieza arc, in addition to Super Trunks from the Cell Saga, and also Hit from the Universe 6 tournament, and also Tournament of Power characters characters Dispo, Topo, and Berserk Kale, and finally, Full Power Super Saiyan Broly. Not the movie one, the canon one from the newest Dragon Ball content. So that's a lot of characters without a doubt. Of course, considering that there are more to be revealed in the coming weeks, I fully expect that we'll see plenty of Dragon Ball Super characters in this game, and probably a tournament of power mode because of course. And hopefully some manga characters too, because the manga's gonna be on hiatus for a while, and those characters really shouldn't be forgotten about. Microsoft Rewards was a service that gave users points for doing games, searches, and other little things. But recently, some Xbox users are starting to see that the Xbox Rewards service is discontinuing in order to streamline further. This was initially broken by a Twitter user known as Idle Sloth, and basically it says that weekly challenges will continue to be available until the end of November of 2024, in which that will be discontinued. Now, of course, while this information was first discovered in Portugal, it is currently unclear at this time if this will take place in the US proper. I actually have used Microsoft Rewards in the past, I think it's been fine, but honestly, I'm not going to be that brokenhearted if it does go away. It's pretty much just another thing, and also it doesn't really play nice on the Google extensions browser, so yeah, probably 
hard to say for sure what's going to happen if it does have issues and has to be removed in the U.S. as well. On today's game review, we've got Intelligent Cube played on PlayStation 5. So this game is a puzzle title made by G-Artists and is also known as Karushi in European regions. Basically, all you would really do is clear a set of cubes multiple times in order to progress. That being said, this is not a game made for a time crunch, so try not to speedrun it unless you know these levels inside and out. You basically play the game by pressing X to capture the gray and green cubes, and avoid the black cubes or they'll shrink the level, and make your game an even bigger headache. I found myself constantly hitting buttons too early, too late, or just hitting the wrong button in general, and thus turning this puzzle game into a rather stressful pain in the butt. But really though, this simple and finicky game was a neat thing in its own time in the 90s, but it wasn't made for all. My final score is a 7.5 out of 10. On this week's What's New for Limited Run, we've got Grounded Fully Yoked Edition by Obsidian Entertainment coming out for PS5, Xbox Series consoles, and Nintendo Switch. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is finally headed back to consoles with Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition for Switch at $40 US, and the Standard Editions of Grounded Fully Yoked Edition are $40 US, and the Collector's Editions are $125 US. Now, of course, I really don't care about Grounded, it's basically a camping sim, but Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, on the other hand, is a pretty cool thing to see continue and return as this is also going to be coming with the Soaked and Wild expansion packs too, and as a mobile Switch game, I think this is definitely going to have a new life for sure. It's pretty awesome to see. So this was a bit of a disappointment to hear. Think Up Gaming has cancelled their Kickstarter for Shuffle Golf on March 20th, 2024. Because they locked the reason of the cancellation behind a paywall, unfortunately we're just going to have to go off a comment or two on this one. According to some users, the project has been cancelled for copyright reasons and low buyer numbers. Despite having thousands of dollars over its financial goal, only 148 people supported this project, thus ThinkUp Gaming felt that there was no interest in moving ahead with it and just dropping it. Now while it is unconfirmed if anyone is being refunded for this, ThinkUp Gaming did say that they plan to ship this Shuffle Golf product in July of this year. But given the cancellation, this could get dicey if things don't get cleared up soon. As the Amigo team continues to kick the can down the road in their own way into the spring, they've also revealed their updates to their roadmap, still with no response for the console, or even a manufacturing plan for the controller. Instead, they've listed two more games that are going to be coming in the spring. And while they've been wishy-washy about the state of things, so far they've been pretty consistent with the release mark of their games and game updates. First off is Backtalk Party coming in March, followed by Rigid Force Redux in April, and Finnegan Fox in May. At this point, they'll probably just push out as many games as they can before the resources completely run dry. And while I am far from optimistic of a console release at this point, I think they're probably going to give an honest shot at trying to release the controller, even though we have no idea who's manufacturing the thing. So we're cutting it a bit short today as there actually wasn't that much going on this week. But with Arcade 1-Up seemingly dead in the product space and Alan 1's promising future with the Atari partnership, what do you all think of the little bits that did come up this week? Leave your thoughts below and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, have a good one. Special thanks to Huey Holmes, Constorm's sole YouTube producer.